Okay, okay we're talking about bats today. So if we're talking about bats, why would I have a dinosaur here? Any idea why we'd have a dinosaur at a bat table? Huh. Well, guess what? Bats and dinosaurs were on the planet at the same time. 50 million years ago, bats and dinosaurs were here. And that is what a bat fossil would look like. And this is a modern bat skeleton, and it's changed very little in 50 million years. And it's, it's the bat's arm is just like ours. <clears throat> it's got a thumb on it, you see the little thumb? And four fingers, and an elbow, and a wrist. What do you have a bald eagle? I will. What, honey? Well, why do I have a bald eagle? Do you know what this is? It is a flying squirrel. Do flying squirrels fly? No, no, they don't. They glide exactly. I have the bird, the eagle, and the bat to let you know that bats are the only mammals that can actually really fly. They flap their wings, they land, they take off just like birds. So this is just to show you that flying squirrels don't fly. Bats do, just like birds. And if you would like, you can put rub that with your finger. That's what a bat wing would feel like. Take off your glove and you can feel it if you want. I'd like to. Very soft, very fragile. They will tear easily. Um, it's, it's not, well, this won't tear so easily. Okay, but I do have one with a hole in it already. Um, but bat wings do get torn, um, and branches and things like that where they're flying by. And these are just some representative bats from around the world. And basically, there's two groups of bats, what they call them mega bats. Wow, that's big. Wow. And these are mega bats, too. It's, it has more to do with what they eat and how they get, find their way around. Um, the megabats are all from the old world, Africa, Southeast Asia, Australia. Those are the fruit bats and the flying foxes. They all have really big eyes. They see really well. That's how they find their food with, with their eyes and their noses. Have you, ever, have you ever lost a banana or an apple in your backpack from school? Or maybe an apple tore and under the seat of the car or the van and about three or four days later you can smell it rotting? That's how these guys find their food. They sniff, sniff out overripe fruit. And this is one of the um, fruit bats. Yeah, they got all have big eyes. This one actually feeds on pollen and nectar, like a hummingbird. You're allergic to pollen. Okay, well we won't make you eat any pollen today. And then the rest That's of the, these are the, these are the mega bats and the micro bats. They all have little eyes and they all can echolocate. Um, that's how they find their way around and find their food. They've got, oh, they, they got all kinds of ears. They got some of the really big ears. This guy's really cool. This is the spotted bat from the southwest United States, Arizona, New Mexico, and Canada. It looks just like that. Black body, white spots, big ears like a rabbit. What about this bat over here? Oh, that's all right. That's a nice bat. I'm not quite sure which what species of bat that is. A ghost bat. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, these are the two most common bats around Atlanta. This is a big brown bat, and that's an eastern red bat. This is a female. This is what a male red bat would look like. These guys find their, they eat insects, okay, these are insect eaters, um, and they find it by something called echolocation, and basically all they're doing is scream really loudly. If we can hear it, it'd be as loud as a smoke alarm going off, but we can't hear back calls because they're what's referred to as ultrasonic. All that is the big word, it means it's such a high frequency, we can't hear it. So I can talk about echolocation and ultrasound. <laughs> uh, ultrasound, like I just said, is the stuff we can't hear. Now listen to the plane, and you're gonna, when I push the button, I shall let you push that button in a second. It's going to go make a noise and come up, to a peak, and it's going to come back down. So go ahead and push that button, and listen. Okay, well, it's up to the peak, and then it comes back down. You can push it the next time. Let me get, just let it stop, and then we'll turn the bat detector on. This picks up the sounds that we can't hear, and then we'll listen to it. And it'll be totally different. Go ahead and push the button. Go ahead, Sam. That's making it kind of hard, huh? Go ahead. So 
we heard a whole lot more noises there. Those are all things that are called ultrasound. We can't hear it. It's all it means. It's too high frequency for us to hear. Um, now, the interesting thing, if any bat in Georgia, if you could catch one and put it in an envelope, you could mail it for first class postage. And all that means is it weighs less than an ounce. And if, if you get a grandparent, an aunt or uncle that sends you like a birthday card or a Christmas card, as long as it doesn't have a whole lot of money in it, that would weigh just about as much as a bat. If it has a lot of money in it, then it's going to weigh more than a bat and you'll be lucky. Um, anybody know what that is? Exactly. That's one of the predators of bats. One of the things that eats bats are snakes. This happens to be a boa. Um, but they also have things like rat snakes and coach whip snakes. They will all eat bats if they get a chance. Um, and then we can talk about what's in the bat's lunchbox. Because bats eat a lot of different things. Like we said, we've got, we've got the one that feeds on pollen and nectar. Okay. These are the, some of the long-tongued bats, and they'll actually hover over and over a big flower, and flowers are generally light colors because they're easier to see at night, and they'll hover just like a hummingbird, okay? They'll be right over a hummingbird, just like a hummingbird, except they're out at night, and they'll get the pollen and the nectar out, and if you look at this, you can see all that white stuff on these bats' noses is pollen. And here's one of his heads stuffed down inside the flower, his long tongue sticking out to get the nectar. So we've got some nectar eaters. Then we've got some bats that are fruit eaters, like these flying foxes. And then we have things like bananas and figs and papayas and avocados and mangoes. Oh, these guys just stand here. And let's see here. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk about that when we get to the bird and the cow. Let's, let me get some of these bugs out of here first, because all the bats in Georgia are insect eaters. Things like flying ants and beetles and flies and moths. And the interesting thing about the insect eating bats, they'll eat up to their body weight every night in insects. So this is how many beetles a big brown bat would eat every day, about 14 or so grams. These are moth wings and body parts. That's what a red bat eats. And Sam, you're about 50 pounds, aren't you? Close, maybe a little bit more? A little bit less. A little bit less, okay. If you were a bat, you'd have to eat like 200 McDonald's quarter pounders every day to maintain your body weight. That's how much bats eat and how fast their metabolism is. It's a lot. Now, some bats in the Southwest eat lizards and scorpions. There's a pallet bat that likes to eat scorpions. You know that. Some like fish. Some like fish. Do some like frogs? Where's my other frog? There it is. Do some like frogs? Yes, some like frogs. Some like. Say here's here's one getting ready to eat a frog. There's some. There's and more bugs. There's more bugs. Exactly. There's lots of bugs in there. And what these guys will do is they'll listen to the frog croak, and that's how they're going to find these frogs to eat. Um... Uh...